Hello, this is Frankie G. Morales, your rock and roll science teacher with help on drawing electron configurations. Uh, this video assumes that you've already been introduced to the concept of electron, electron configurations and what we're going to tell you is uh, how, to, how to just keep building them and a little bit about why we do this. So we're going to just go ahead and start. I'm going to start here with um, a hydrogen atom that I'm drawing. I'm, draw, I'm going to draw the hydrogen atom with a uh, shell with an with an electron cloud around it <clears throat> and I'm going to just drop an electron there inside that cloud this cloud we would refer to it as a, a sphere and we say it's the first sphere drawn it's uh, the S means a sphere and and the little one superscript means that there's one electron in there. I'm just going to erase that real quick and move on to helium. And we're going to draw helium here. We're going to say helium is just like hydrogen. It's got a shell, a spherical shell. And instead of having one electron, it's got two. This explains why helium is in the second position on a periodic table. Because it has two protons. We could draw that in there. And it's got two electrons. We can keep going. We'll go with lithium next. In lithium we have three protons. So we're going to just drop a third one. Drop a third. There it is. Three protons. Now, um, you might remember from middle school concept that the first energy level is full after it has two electrons so we're going to need to draw another energy level we're going to draw that cloud it's still a sphere just like our first cloud and we're going to drop in one electron there and so electron configuration for lithium is just like hydrogen it had that first shell just like hydrogen that first shell is a sphere of a cloud just like hydrogen or I should say just like helium lithium filled its first shell with two electrons started to build a second one also a sphere this time we ended with one electron there maybe you can anticipate what happens next What's going to happen next when we move on from lithium to beryllium? So if we wanted to draw the electron configuration for beryllium, I hope that you can imagine that we're now going to drop in a second electron, beryllium being the fourth element in the periodic table. Just like helium, we filled a first energy level S-shape cloud with two electrons. We also in the second energy level filled an S-shaped cloud with two electrons. Now what's next? If you would look please at a block diagram of the periodic table you'll notice that after you go from uh, past beryllium you're going to move on to boron. Boron's element number five. Element number five uh, situated over there in the P block. And P block <clears throat> is trying to tell us that when we're filling in electrons here, that we're filling them in um, in in clouds. These clouds are electron clouds. They're also second layer, but these clouds are in the shape of dumbbells. And so I'm going to try to draw here. You'll notice that it's um, You'll notice that we're trying to make it over here to the second layer, I'm trying to draw that just as far out as the second layer goes. Uh, but instead of drawing a sphere, I'm drawing a dumbbell shape. And because we're going to add another electron in there, that means that it's going to look something like that. And so boron being the fifth element, it will look 
on the inside just like helium does with another S-shaped cloud in the second energy level just like beryllium does but now also in the second level it's going to have a dumbbell shaped cloud with one electron in it. Can you imagine what carbon might look like? If you're thinking carbon needs to draw needs to drop in another electron here uh, that's close to what actually happens but in effect I mean in, in reality what happens is you gotta draw another dumbbell shaped cloud and then drop the electron in there now I'm gonna take a little shortcut here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase um, boron if it'll let me right it ends up that I can't erase once I've left pencil mode so I'm just gonna keep going here underneath boron I'm gonna draw carbon uh, what I was trying to do is avoid repeating myself here so just like the first two clouds and even just like the second little subcloud, um, I'm just doing the same thing as boron, but I've added a second. Um, I've added a second electron there. We can keep going. We're going to drop in a third. This is going to do it for p. We call them <coughs> we call them suborbitals. They're allowed three per energy level so here at the second level so here at the second level I've drawn in three p-shaped clouds I'm only allowed to go that far okay so here I've added the third electron if you're following along on the periodic table which I really need you to do at this point is you'll notice that you're in the third box in the periodic table in P block and counting off one, two, three, you'll notice that that's boron carbon, that that's nitrogen. What you can go, what you can do after you've filled in one electron on each um, p cloud, is you can fill in another one for oxygen. We're going to do that. You can fill another one in for fluorine. We're going to do that, and then you can fill another one in for neon. We're going to do that. So here, neon is. Um, I'm drawing in the electron configuration for neon. What I'm drawing is one layer sphere shaped cloud, two electrons, two layers sphere shaped cloud with two, P shaped clouds with six. You might notice the rule is one cloud, two electrons. We call the cloud suborbitals. Uh, tried to draw the whole orbital here for the second layer. You'll notice it's made out of uh, four different suborbitals. There's the S suborbital, and then this P that is along the x-axis, if you will, like in algebra or geometry when you're drawing a coordinate plane. You can call that x-axis. You can call that y-axis. You can call that z-axis, showing us that you have three P suborbitals. So if you counted them all together, you would see that we have <clears throat> you would have one, two, three, four different suborbitals that make up the second layer of electrons on neon. Also please notice that that puts us at the end of the second row in the periodic table. We could say that's at the end of the second period of the periodic table. So drawing that connection, each period is showing us another layer of electrons. At the end of the period, that's showing us a full layer of electrons. And then using your block diagram, moving through the colors of the blocks in a block diagram, is showing us the different style or shape of suborbitals inside that layer of electrons. Hope this helps. Feel free to rewind, watch it as much as you can. Ask me any questions that you might have in class.